Imagine this. The year is 1947, and you are a country that is dead broke. The Great War has just ended, and you're doing your best to recover as a nation. And oh no! In the war, your air forces were just about wiped out. Now you, as the leader of this glorious nation, is a complete cheapskate. But there is no way that you're gonna let your country be without an air force. What is the solution? A question I'm certain we've all asked in our lives. What if you took a Vespa scooter and turned it into a highly regarded aircraft? More specifically, a highly regarded fighter aircraft. Hey guys, it's Messier82, and today we're going to be answering one of life's greatest mysteries. How cheaply can you design a nation's fighter planes? So the largest part of this challenge in the name of the game was cost effectiveness. You see, of many fighter aircraft of the Second World War, there are some problems. In order to house a bigger engine or be more aerodynamic, much larger and more expensive airframes were used. On top of that, the fuel costs, engine costs, maintenance costs, and training costs for the pilot were far higher on these vehicles. So therefore, we will be aiming to cut these costs as much as possible for the aspiring cheapskate who doesn't want to spend money on good airframes. So the first thing we need to look at when cutting costs is the airframe and the pilot. As you know, those are two of the highest costs of a normal fighter. By replacing the fuselage with this simple ladder frame and windscreen, production costs can be significantly reduced. Furthermore, this vehicle from my experience would be classified as an ultralight, therefore meaning the operators did not need a pilot's license which would make it as easy as possible to fly. Probably the most unusual part of this build, or rather the most expensive part, would be the engine. A 5 liter turbocharged inline engine was sure to be more than enough power. So the design philosophy was pretty simple. Our aircraft may not be as fast, or as capable, or carry as large of a payload as the competition of the time period, the time period being post-war propeller aircraft that is. What we did have, however, was a good power to weight, maneuverability, and of course, guns. While it may not exactly outspeed aircraft, it was in fact built with a seat with a full harness and railings, as well as some extra ladder framing through the wings, combined with the light weight and low wing loading of the craft would probably allow us to have an unmatched turn rate to just about any aircraft out there. So while it couldn't exactly go fast, it would still absolutely hold its own in a dogfight. Two 15mm cannons and 600 rounds of ammo between them was more than enough to prove this. The pilot was also given a windscreen and fuselage of a modified scooter to give him the utmost comfort and visibility in flight. And once again, the most interesting part of this aircraft was probably the engine. This incredibly lightweight aircraft features a 5.0 liter turbocharged inline engine with a large intercooler, allowing nearly a 1.0 thrust to weight ratio on a lightweight airframe. Climbing, turning, and even top speed was vastly improved by this engine. And of course, in true cheap skate fashion, we used a welded diff to connect the driveline of the propeller to the gearbox. And then on the tip of that, a six-bladed propeller was connected with a variable prop pitch between 10 and 90 degrees. If you adjusted your prop pitch correctly, I believe at the end of this whole thing's construction, I found, uh, excuse me, someone's mowing outside at the time of this recording. I have no clue if you guys can hear that, but. But anyways, that is fine. What was I saying? Oh yeah. Six bladed propeller was connected at the end with an adjustable prop pitch and I believe I could get this thing up to, at altitude of course, about 350 miles per hour um, true airspeed. Which is pretty dang quick for the little thing. Ultimately, I also wanted a little bit more out of this aircraft than a really cheap fighter airplane. I also wanted something that could be upgraded for the future of cheap skates. But first of all, let's discuss the price. Taking from the time period, the regular uh, cost of such an aircraft as well as the regular cost of an engine and all that uh, parts that I've connected on the aircraft, I believe the baseline model of this aircraft that's, you know, excluding the guns could probably be produced for about $700 in the 1947 equivalent. Especially with the ease of production of such a mass-produced vehicle and uh, the amount of con corners cut in uh, production to actually make them. You know, while all these other guys are developing these advanced bailing out systems for their aircraft, this one's pretty simple. You just roll off the side and you're done. You've, uh, you've escaped the aircraft. Just, just make sure to roll far enough to clear the propeller. You see, this thing really was a, a cost-saving beauty. My, my genius is just incredible on this design. Like, think, ejections have never been faster before, or as cheap. 
I mean, hey, you don't even need a door on the side of the aircraft. You can just unbuckle your seatbelt and hop out. Although I gotta say, parachutes aren't very uh, cost effective, so maybe we won't give them them. Maybe we'll just tell them to eject over water, or bail out over water or something. Ah, that'd still kill them. Maybe we'll just, uh... Hmm. Eh. We'll, we'll, we'll have to give them a parachute. Oh well, maybe it'll cost like $750 now. Anyways, as I was saying, Cheap skates are obviously going to want to upgrade their vehicles. Maybe they purchase the baseline package with one gun and barely any engine power, and that one will probably run them a little bit less money. But let's say they bought, bought the premium package because they clearly take defense of their country seriously if they're buying the premium package of this. How are they going to upgrade it to keep running in the future? I mean, seven, eight hundred dollars, that's a big investment for a country. Obviously, they're going to need... They're gonna need some kind of security. Will this thing still hold up to a plane in 20, 30 years time? So to answer that question, at the end of the video, I'll decide to mount AIM-9s and rocket pods to this thing to see if we can't make an excellent attack aircraft out of it. I'm sure with the power to wait, we'll be able to at least do something with it. Well, anyways, with all of our systems, our little I-4 turbo engine in the back, our cheap wings that look like they were made with tarp, our crappy cockpit and our front end ripped off of a scooter, I think that was just about all we had for this aircraft. We were ready to fly. Don't miss out on life's most beautiful moments trying to decide on a fighter plane to fly for your nation. High performance for the cost of $700, what more could you ask for? Quick to fly, fun to use, and easy to maintain. What more could you truly need in an aircraft? For only $700, you can be the dogfighting pilot you've always dreamed of being. We're all in this together. No matter the conflict or the nation, we'll always provide for you. So what are you waiting for? Buy yours at the local Ultracraft dealer today. Aircraft only available for purchase from authorized dealers. For shipping purposes, all aircraft are vacuum sealed. Warranty void if aircraft is exposed to air. Additional needs may apply. All right, everyone. Here is our vehicle. Let me open the prop menu. Do some uh, pitch setting. Oh. I think there is a slight chance we need more structural reinforcement in our wings. All right, guys, we are uh, we're back for part two. Sorry about that. I uh, didn't set up the settings for my wings properly. Uh, yeah, we're back in the air. So the reason earlier I was mentioning the prop pitch menu is because this thing is so ridiculously powerful that you actually gotta watch the prop pitch pretty closely because of how easily it'll overspeed. But we are literally going 240 miles an hour right now in a straight line. Turn the lights on. Oh my god, I love this thing so much. It's such a maneuverable little airplane as well. Like, if you just go low speed and put on like 5% power or something, it'll kind of act like a normal ultralight, which is funny. Oh my... Ooh, okay. We're good. We're good. I thought I was gonna die there. <laughs> there we go. Just put on like, I don't know, 13% power? There you go. Now I'm just a normal little ultralight. With a turbo that's trying to spool. But doesn't have the power to. There we go. That's what I like it. Do a quick little gun test. Yeah, they work. Who would have guessed? I wonder if I can fly in between that, like... I don't think I have the rudder authority to do that, but I'm gonna try. Oh no, I can just go straight through. Oh, look at that. Nice. Perfect. 
awesome. I love the differential we ripped out of like a Honda Civic or something you just shoved on the back of this thing. Of course, cockpit view great as always. All right, now one thing I do want to do, I want to see if I can carry missiles on this thing and if it can still fly, because, I mean, if I had missiles to this thing, it's probably going to double its weight, so, uh, we'll see if it can still fly. But first, obviously, I want to try landing, so. Actually, you know something I did notice first time I tried to land is that the guns could literally recoil you out of the sky and make you do a Cobra. I wonder if they can still do that. Hold on. Oh! Yes, they can. Oh, you know what? We're fine. See, look, no damage. Just, uh... Just a bit rough. Alright, let me, let me, um, equip some AIM-9s to this thing and see if I can't shoot down a drone. Alright. We are back, and you know what? We didn't just mount missiles to this thing. We mounted four missiles and rocket pod, so let's see if we can even get it to the air now. It's just so powerful that I think it might be able to be here. Eh? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Alright, we're gonna spawn in a tank. Oh, he's far away. We're gonna be flying for a while. Hey guys, just doing a quick time lapse here because, you know, uh, it's gonna take a while to fly to the target otherwise, and I ended up switching targets. We were making a bunch of dumb jokes on the server last night about this thing being an F-22 killer. I think I'm actually gonna make that my thumbnail. You know, just slap a couple missiles on it. I'm sure I could kill an F-22. Definitely. Definitely would one-on-one -on -one it in a dogfight, too. Anyways, we're hero crap. Alright, we just about made it to the position of our tank. Disengage the autopilot, cut throttle, and I have no clue how to aim these, so, uh... Your guess is as good as mine, but... There's the target. Ooh, first one dead hit, awesome. Perfect. Mission successful, I guess, guys. But oh no, there's a target drone. Let me ditch my payload, then grab my missiles and kill him. Where are you going? Die. There he goes. There you go, that's all it took, one missile. I'm just gonna fire the rest of them off, because I don't really need them anymore. There we go. Whole fun group of missiles. Oh, he missed! Oh crap, what's my plane doing? Oh, okay, we're flying good. Thank god. Uh... Honestly, that was a bit anticlimactic. I thought it would, uh... I thought it would take a little bit longer to get them, but no. Not at all. Not in the slightest. Well, uh, mission... Mission successful, I guess. I'll just, uh, fly home now. See you guys there. You know what's actually pretty cool watching this time-lapse that you only really notice in the time-lapse? You can genuinely see how battered around by the wind this thing is. Like, it's not really apparent when you're flying it, but you can see it like bob up and down in the wind as it goes over the mountains and as it hits updrafts and downdrafts, which I think is pretty cool. Anyways, we're gonna land now, so bye. Alright, we're just about coming in for a land end now. Coming in a little fast, so I'm gonna extend out this way, bleed off some speed before landing. Since it's a mountain runway, I believe, actually, luckily the wind's in our favor right now. We got a little bit of a headwind, but uh, it's really hard to tell on this runway because of the uh, the air tumbling over the mountain. It's very inconsistent. But we seem to be, you know, lining up for a pretty solid landing approach on active runway, so. Wind is in our favor. 
You know, all things considered, you figure that we'd slow down faster in this thing, but uh, we do not. So... <laughs> like, I'm gaining speed right now. I'm going 210 miles an hour. And you can hear that the turbo is still spooled. It sounds so funny. Also, I'm not sure I pointed it out earlier, but we do in fact have a flare pot on the bottom <laughs> as part of our modernization kit here. Our little, uh, I don't know. I said this thing was supposed to be made in 1947, but those missiles and rocket pods tell me this says 60s or 70s, so maybe this is a modernization program. You know, whatever cheapskate didn't want to actually get a new plane, so they just modernized their ultralights. And that is where the true F-22 killer comes in. Still going a little bit fast. Might use my guns to slow down here. There you go. Just, uh, clear down range, hopefully. If not, uh, we may have killed a few people, but that's fine. That doesn't matter. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Interesting landing. Alright, well, that's that's about all we got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing me fly this monstrosity. I sure had fun building it. Uh, if not, well, uh, too bad. See you guys in the next one, and goodbye.